Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In a previous video, I showed you how to configure your tool database for a keyhole bit. This is Tom with TK Designs, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a keyhole toolpath for vCarve Desktop, vCarve Pro, and the Aspire programs. Now this will include two different ways to make the toolpath depending on whether or not you have pro versions of the software or desktop versions. There are two different methods for creating keyhole toolpaths, and that will be determined by which edition of vCarve you have. If you have the vCarve desktop, the first method we cover will work to create your keyhole toolpaths for version 12 or lower. The second method, only available on vCard Pro or Aspire, is the cool keyhole toolpath gadget. If you want to jump directly to that method, please go to the start and the time code listed here in the video. I've already created my project, which is 184 millimeters wide, which is our X measurement, 115 millimeters high, our Y measurement, and th 32 millimeters thick, which is our Z height. First, I'll make a couple of straight lines to identify where the center of the project is. So I'm going to start by using the draw line polyline tool. And on the X axis, I'm going to make it 92 millimeters and zero on the Y axis. So we'll run that line from top to bottom to give us our center point vertically. Right click to leave the line. And then we'll make a separate line starting on zero on the X axis and 57.5 millimeters on the y-axis, which will give us our midpoint horizontally. So we're going to draw that line through, and we'll left-click and then right-click to leave the line. Next, I want to determine the starting point for the keyhole. If doing the keyhole vertically, I would want to start from the bottom of the material and go from bottom to top so that the hole from our keyhole bit is at the bottom and the slot rises to the top. If doing the keyhole horizontally, I would start on the left side of the center point and I would go from left to right so that the keyhole starts on the left and finishes on the center line on the right. I'm going to do a horizontal keyhole. So let's select our line polyline tool again. And for our X coordinate, we're going to enter in 72.5 millimeters and our Y coordinate will be 95 millimeters. Click on add and that'll give us our starting point for our line. We're going to take that right to our center line left click and then drag that line back to our center once again left click and right click to release what we have is a line that runs left to right and then right to left it's important so that when we do our tool paths we don't start to the right move to the left and then retract what we want the path to do is move left move right and then retract our tool to exit from the same hole it entered. Cool, which will generate a tool path for with a diameter of the keyhole bit, which is 9.9 .9 millimeters. So we'll click on our circle tool. We'll set our diameter to 9.9 .9 millimeters. We'll create that. And then what we want to do is we want to center that on the line. Try that again. Seventy two point five and ninety five for the creation point, and there we have it centered. Now let's go ahead and switch over to our tool paths. And the first tool path I want to create will be a two point 
2D profile tool path, which we will select for our single line. We're gonna give this a cut depth of 8.75 millimeters, which is the equivalent of the cut depth of our keyhole tool. For our end mill, I'm gonna select a 1 8 inch end mill. Gonna carve our machine vectors on the line and leave everything else the same. We'll go ahead and give that a name of profile one. Calculate that out. And then if we look at that tool path really, really close, we'll see that our entry and exit are in the same location. If we run that tool path, it goes the length and comes back. Next, using the same 1 8 inch end mill, I'm going to highlight the circle and create a pocket tool path. It will also set to a cut depth of 8.75 millimeters. We'll go ahead and call that pocket one. Calculate that out. And then we see if we run that tool path, it gives us our circle. So with our circle and then our profile path, What we'll see is that we get the basic shape of what our keyhole will be. Finally, for our last tool path, we're going to use another profile tool path, just as we did originally. This time, we're going to select our keyhole bit. and we're gonna highlight just the double line. We can go ahead and call that one profile two. And again, make sure you leave it on machine vectors on the line, leave everything else off. Select calculate, and that will calculate out our tool paths. Finally, we can take our tool paths and we can export those out. Highlight all three, collect the save tool paths. You can put all the tool paths in one file if you have an automatic tool changer such as I do. If not, break them down into individual tool paths. We'll click on save tool path. and we can give it a name to run on the CNC. And click on save to finish that up. Now let's head to the CNC and run these tool pads and show you what our end result is. First, we'll run our tool pads to clear out the area, the circle, and our double line. Next, we're going to use our keyhole bit to clear out the final path for our keyhole.
next thing we need to do when we're going to generate a keyhole toolpath from the gadget is to create a circle where we're going to start. So again, we're going to create the circle with an X coordinate of 72.5 and a Y coordinate of 95, the same location as where we had the circle before. We'll go ahead and create that. Click close. Now we can go ahead and highlight that circle, come up to gadgets and select the keyhole toolpath gadget. In this case, we're going to make a horizontal left to right. Our slot depth is going to be 8.75 millimeters, just as we had before. And we're going to go a 20 millimeter length. We're going to make sure that create preview vectors from for outlines on surface is selected. And the entry hole diameter is the diameter of our bit. And our slot diameter is the slot width. We can go ahead and call this keyhole toolpath gadget. And we'll click on OK. Now, if we zoom in on the toolpath, you'll see that you have arrows going in both directions. First going to the, from left to right, and then back from right to left. You'll also note that the center line of the keyhole is measured on our center line of our project. We switch over to our toolpaths, you'll see that you have a singular toolpath there that will get cut. Now the downside of this is, is that if you don't create a separate toolpath to clear, your keyhole bit is going to get go down and hog out the entire amount of material here. So we're going to try to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, and we're going to create a pocket tool path highlighted on that vector. And again, with our 1 8 inch bit, we'll calculate that out. And what we'll see is if we run that pocketing tool path, we get our material cleared out a little bit and then that leaves less work for the keyhole bit to actually do. From there, we want to rearrange our pocket to go first so that when we export our tool paths, we get the 1 8 inch bit to clear things out and then we get our keyhole tool path. So we'll go ahead and save those. Again, all of the toolpaths in one file, and we'll save it. And we'll call this one Keyhole Toolpath Gadget. Actually, I like to put underscores in there. We'll save that and we'll close that and we'll go ahead and run to the CNC and run this toolpath now. First we'll run our clearance toolpath with our 1 8 inch bit. Now we'll run the keyhole gadget toolpath. On the left, we have the manual keyhole, and on the right, we have the keyhole gadget toolpath. Both work very well, as you can see. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and give me your thoughts in the comments below. Here's a couple of other videos I think you'll like. See you again soon.